2019 was another historic year for J League. Goals. Skills. And plenty of passion and drama. The start of the season brought many changes. Former Barcelona players David Villa and Thomas Vermaelen reunited with Andres Iniesta on a star-studded Vissel Kobe side. In the first month of league play, Nagoya Grampus were surprising early front runners. March, former Barcelona man Sergi Sampa joined Vissel Kobe. <laughs> After four games played, FC Tokyo sat atop the table. The league's added many stars in recent years, but none more high profile than Andres Iniesta. Iniesta emerged as a team leader for Vissel Kobe since signing last year, and in April it was made official. Iniesta was named captain. Meanwhile, the league lead continued to change hands multiple times. After match day five, Nagoya Grampus was out in front. Nagoya Grampus was soon overtaken by Sanfrecce Hiroshima on match day six. And by match day eight, FC Tokyo were back on top. As the league's fourth month came and went, FC Tokyo maintained their lead at the summit. A large part of that credit belonged to 17-year-old Takefusa Kubo. Kubo scored his first J-League goal and earned a call-up to the Japan national team. Kubo's stardom at FC Tokyo wouldn't last long though, as European giants Real Madrid soon came calling. A month later, another Japanese starlet was signed for a Spanish super club. This time, Kashima Antlers' Hiroki Abe joined Madrid's arch-rival Barcelona. As spring turned to summer, FC Tokyo continued to lead the pack. But 
Yokohama F Marino's surging form saw them climb to within three points of the league leaders. <laughs> Further down the table, Fernando Torres scored twice, including this deft header to give Sagantos the win over Shimitsu Espos. <laughs> Soon after, Torres would play familiar foes with Sel Kobi. <laughs> Elsewhere, Hokkaido Consadole Sapporo made history, beating Shimizu S Pulse 8 0. Former England international Jay Bothroyd rolled back the years with a superb hat trick en route to the J League's biggest win since 2003. <laughs> Meanwhile, FC Tokyo continued their march towards the first J1 title, holding off challenges for large stretches of the campaign. But by the end of August, second place Kashima Antlers had cut the deficit to only four points. On match day 26, the score was to be settled. J League's top two teams head to head in Kashima. Goals from Wellington and Serginho capped an Antlers masterclass as Kashima's 2-0 victory cut FC Tokyo's lead to just one point. At the other end of the table, Shimitsu Espo's league form meant their supporters had little to celebrate. But this goal from Kenta Nishizawa against Nagoya Grampus brought their fans a brief respite. Fellow strugglers Jubilo Iwata also got a bit of joy when Brazilian midfielder Adelton scored his beautiful overhead kick. October was an eventful month that first saw Gamba Osaka celebrate their 400th league win. Some surprising results changed the outlook of the J1 table at both ends, as strugglers Sagantos beat FC Tokyo 2-1. First time since March, there was a new J League frontrunner in Kashima Antlers. FC Tokyo remained second place on goal differential. Yes. 
And in third, Yokohama F. Marino is just one point behind the top two. Marino's upward momentum wouldn't stop there. By November, their surging and stylish attack took the league by storm and planted them firmly at the top of the table. Marino scored one the goals too. This solo effort from the season's breakout player, Terohito Nakagawa, saw Yokohama steal a 1-0 victory over relegation battlers Matsumoto Yamaga FC. <laughs> And the audacious goals continued from Shimizu Espos, as Douglas set up Junior Dutra with his stunning overhead kick against Oita Trinita. <laughs> Speaking of wonder goals, Vissel Kobe star striker David Villa announced he would retire at the season's end, following a match against Jubilo Iwata. A trademark via penalty. <laughs> Coupled with a Lukas Podolski hat trick, gave Wiesel Kobe a 4 1 win on a remarkable day for the club. It was a day to remember, as a generational talent bid farewell to the game, leaving the sport in a way he knew best, scoring goals. But the final match day would be known for one thing, a J1 title to be decided in a match between league leaders Yokohama F Marinos and second place FC Tokyo. FC Tokyo needed a massive win by at least four goals to leap Yokohama and secure a historic first title. But the magic of Marinos continued, as Australian manager Ange Postacoglu led Yokohama past FC Tokyo by a score of 3-0 and claimed the club's first J-League crown in 15 years. It was nothing less than what Yokohama F Marinos deserved, after finishing the campaign on an 11-match unbeaten run, 10 of those victories. Despite the heartbreak of missing out on the title, FC Tokyo will join Yokohama F Marinos in next season's Asian Champions League, while Kashima Antlers also guaranteeing themselves a spot in the ACL for the third place finish. On the other end of the table, it's despair for Matsumoto Yamaga and Jubilo Iwata, who will play in J2 League next year following relegation. It was an impressive awards haul for Yokohama F Marinos, who had J1's top coach in Ange Postacoglu and the most valuable player, Terohito Nakagawa. And Wissel Kobe's David Villa won one last award before hanging up his boots, winning goal of the season for this stunner. Another captivating season of J-League football comes to a close. A truly phenomenal run-up to the J1 table for Yokohama F Marinos will go down in the history books, as they went virtually unbeaten for the final third of the campaign. A massive congratulations to our new champions, Yokohama F Marinos. We'll see you next year.